Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrik. The Shura Council held its weekly session presided over by its chairman Ali al Saleh. The session discussed the report of the Services Committee regarding a draft law amending some provisions of Law 32 of the year 2009 on the establishment and organization of a pensions and retirement benefit fund for members of the Shura Council, Representatives Council and Municipal Councils. The Council decided not to approve the draft law in principle and to refer it to the Representatives Council for reconsideration. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna bint Ahmed al rumehi inspected Salman Town within the follow-up program for implementing projects in housing towns. The minister affirmed that the completion rates of projects in Salman Town are increasing rapidly to accelerate units and apartments to beneficiaries. She said that Salman Town is currently witnessing the implementation of 303 housing units and more than 1,300 ownership apartments in addition to preparing housing plots and providing them with infrastructure services to make them ready for construction. The minister highlighted that the most prominent characteristics of the project is the use of modern building models, whether in houses or apartments, according to the sixth generation of residential buildings and the interior model of the apartments were designed based on studies and citizens' wishes were taken into consideration. She reviewed the service projects that will be implemented in the town, which include nine mosques, four kindergartens, three schools, a central park, a civil defense center, a police station, a health center, communication towers, coast guard points and towers. The minister affirmed that the completion rates in Salman Town is accompanied by the progress of the implementation of projects in other housing towns such as East Sitra, East Hid and Khalifa Town as the ministry seeks to adhere to the timetables for the implementation of its projects. The Minister of Tourism, Fatma Sayrafi, held a meeting with a number of Bahraini ambassadors organized by the Ministry of Tourism at the Bahrain International Exhibition Center, where officials at the center delivered a presentation on its importance as one of the newest and largest exhibition and conference centers in the Middle East. As Sayrafi affirmed the ministry's keenness to enhance cooperation with Bahrain diplomatic missions abroad to further promote the tourism sector's qualitative development. During the meeting, As Sayrafi noted the important roles played by the Bahraini embassies and missions abroad, including the contribution to strengthening economic cooperation between Bahrain and brotherly and friendly countries, highlighting the joint responsibility in increasing the achievements of the tourism sector. The Ministry of Works under Secretary Sheikh Mish'al bin Mohammed Al Khalifa opened the one-way bridge to turn left onto Prince Saud Al Faisal Street towards Al Fatah suburb as part of the Al Fatah Highway Development Project. The Under Secretary stated that the opening of the one-way bridge will contribute to easing traffic pressure on the current traffic light located at the intersection of Al Fatah Highway with the Prince Saud Al Faisal Street and Sheikh Daij Street. He added that the lanes for turning left from a Prince Saud Al Faisal Street to Al Fatah Highway were previously closed as one of the stages of cancelling the traffic light according to the final plans of the development project. Sheikh Mish'al Al Khalifa affirmed that the project, which has a total completion rate of 61%, is one of the important strategic projects that came in implementation of the government's program. The uh, Tajr application is the first integrated application for smart devices launched by the e-government in cooperation with a number of government agencies through which uh, services related to merchants and businessmen from various ministries and authorities are provided. The application is the first of its kind in the region and its launch constitutes a quantum leap in providing services and modern systems that support the commercial field and is considered one of the prominent electronic national initiatives that support and enhance the readiness of the technical infrastructure. The application is a supportive and stimulating electronic initiative for the private sector that works on comprehensive solutions for record holders to enable them to complete their electronic paperwork in one place. It also plays a major role in saving time for merchants and helps organizing the payment process for the various entities directly related to their field of work in addition to organizing and facilitating financial operations. The Kingdom of Bahrain expressed its deep concern 
and regret over the armed confrontations between the Sudanese armed forces and the rapid support forces and their serious repercussions on the security and safety of Sudanese citizens. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs said in a statement that the Kingdom of Bahrain further calls on the Sudanese parties to prioritize reason, stop armed clashes, exercise restraint to prevent bloodshed and to restore to dialogue to reach political solutions that preserve Sudan's security and stability and protect the interests of the brotherly Sudanese people. The Kingdom affirms its position in support of Sudan and achieving the aspirations of its brotherly people for peace, development and prosperity. In international news, the president of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, discussed with his Brazilian counterpart, Luiz Inacio Lula de Silva, the means to enhance bilateral cooperation in all fields. The two sides reviewed the paths of cooperation and joint action and exchanged views on regional and international issues of common interest and coordination to support peace and stability in the world, especially in light of the current membership of the two countries in the UN Security Council. According to the Emirates News Agency, the two sides discussed the conference of the parties to the United United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, COP or COP28, and opportunities to enhance cooperation between the two countries in this regard, in addition to the need to intensify international collective action and solidarity to confront the threat of climate change. In a statement to the media chairman of the Transitional Sovereignty Council, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah Al-Burhan confirmed that the Rapid Support Forces were the ones who started the battle this morning. Al-Burhan stressed that the armed forces are more than capable of defeating the Rapid Support Forces. He also made it clear in statements to the media that the support forces sought to quickly take control of army headquarters and vital areas at dawn and even carry out assassinations. He stated or he stressed that there was no choice for the armed forces but to confront the ambitions of the rapid support forces in power, as he put it. In addition, he pointed out that the army is managing co -op or operations against the rapid support forces patiently to prevent any casualties. He stressed the army has sufficient forces and will defeat the rapid support forces. At the invitation of Egypt and Saudi Arabia, the extraordinary session of the Arab League chaired by Egypt began today to discuss the developments in Sudan. The official spokesman for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Egyptian Ambassador Ahmed Abu Zaid stated that the successive and dangerous developments in Sudan require that this meeting be held for consultation and coordination between Arab countries to discuss the means to defuse the current crises and restore stability in Sudan as soon as possible. The Arab League expresses deep concern about the current combat operations between the Sudanese army and the rapid support forces in the capital Khartoum and other areas. The Secretary General of the Arab League, Ahmed Abul Ghait, stressed in a statement the responsibility of the wearing parties to preserve the security and safety of Sudanese civilians in the fighting areas and in the whole country, calling for the necessity of an immediate ceasefire and an end to bloodshed. He noted that the readiness of the Arab League General Secretary to intervene with those parties in this regard. The Arab Parliament called on all and his parties to exercise maximum restraint and an immediate ceasefire. It also called to bear in mind the supreme interests of the Sudanese people and to work to preserve the security and stability of Sudan. The Secretary General of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Hussein Ibrahim Taha, called for an immediate ceasefire and a return to dialogue and reason. He expressed his confidence in the wisdom of the Sudanese people and their leaders and their ability to overcome this crisis through negotiation and dialogue. On the second day of developments in Sudan, clashes continued and escalated in the headquarters of the Sudanese army and in several areas in Khartoum and separate parts of the country. The Sudan Doctors Committee announced that the death toll of civilians and fighters of both sides had risen to more than 57 and 595 were wounded. The committee appealed to humanitarian organizations, international and regional health bodies to provide aid and medical supplies to all hospitals and health facilities in Khartoum and areas of the clashes. It also urged the international community human rights and development or in diplomatic organizations to pressure both sides of the conflict to stop the fighting and provide the necessary security for health facilities and hospitals.
The general presidency for the affairs of the Grand Mosque and the Prophet's Mosque stated that the number of worshippers and pilgrims in Mecca reached 1.5 million on the night of the 25th of Ramadan. The general presidency stated that 56,400 Zamzam water bottles were distributed and the number of beneficiaries of voluntary services reached about 495,201 of booklets and pamphlets 12,220 of digital awareness 136,000 and of social and humanitarian service 110,809.